Hello and welcome to Jamaica TV, where we give you all the latest news. Now for the details. It appears that inmates in Jamaica's penal system continues to break the law. After a video emerged this week, which shows several prisoners staging what appears to be a high roller party on a cell block. The video comes after it was revealed last month by Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of National Security, Senator Matthew Samudo, that 2,300 cell phones destined for criminals serving time behind bars were seized by the Department of Correctional Services over the past 12 months. In the latest video, the male prisoners are observed dancing to the latest dancehall music. 25. Dumping a piece. My champion, said a man who appears to be an inmate. It appears that a food competition may have been underway at the illegal event. Another inmate can be seen eating what appears to be food from a large dish on a desk. 22-year-old Daniel Gray of Barbados Avenue, Cornwall Courts in Montego Bay, St. James, has been missing since Wednesday, September 29th. She's of a dark complexion, swim built and about 152 centimeters, 5 feet tall. Reports from the Montego Bay Police are that Gray was last seen at home dressed in a blue long sleeve shirt, green skirt and a pair of black shoes. All efforts to contact her since then has been unsuccessful. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Daniel Gray has been asked to contact the Montego Bay Police at 876-684-9080. The police at 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. A 15-year-old girl, Tabori Nish of Old Brayton, Port Morris, St. Catherine, has been missing since Friday, October 1st. The police have activated an Adand alert to locate her. She's of brown complexion, slim built, and about 157 centimeters, 5 feet, 2 inches tall. Reports from the Portmore Police are that about 11.20 a.m., Tabori was last seen at a supermarket on Brighton Road, Portmore, St. Catherine, wearing a black sleeve blouse, blue tights, and a pair of black slippers. She has not been heard from since then. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Tabori Niche has been asked to contact the Portmore Police at 876 989-8422, the police at 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. The Jamaica Defense Force, JDF, has announced the promotion of four of its officers effective October 1, 2021. They are Colonel Markland Lloyd, who had been promoted to the rank of Brigadier, and Major Carl Clark, as the President and Alisa Cooper Nelson, who had been promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel. The force continues to be proud of its senior officers who exemplify all the qualities that deserve to be lauded. This group of senior officers are just another in line who have been identified as deserving and represent the best example of the Chief of Defense Staff mantra, Mission, Men, Merit, the JDF said in a press release. Prime Minister Andrew Olness has warned that unvaccinated persons should not expect the government to prioritize bed spaces for them at hospitals in the future should they contract COVID-19. He also stressed that once the island reaches an adequate level of COVID-19 vaccination, personal responsibility will be key once the virus prevention protocols are relaxed. Once it reached to the level of vaccination, we can open a back and return to some level of normalcy. And then the burden shifts to individual, said Olness, while on a vaccination tour in St. Mary on Thursday. At that time, if you have not taken the vaccine, that's your business. But don't expect the government to take a bed away from someone who needs to do surgery to put that bed in COVID care, he stated. At that time, it is your decision and your responsibility. There is no freedom without responsibility. So those people who preach free choice must understand that they are not free of responsibility, he added. Olness told residents of the Northeast Parish that vaccination presented the best opportunity for Jamaica to move out of the COVID-19 pandemic. At some point in time, we have to transition out of this pandemic. And for us to be able to do that, we need to get the vaccination up to a level where we protect the vulnerable in the society, he elaborated. While stating that vaccination tours have been successful, 
the Prime Minister indicated that it will come to a point where my touring and encouraging will end because there is just so much of that I can do and the country can do. Additionally, he reiterated that vaccination against COVID-19 will transcend to other aspects of life, including travel, resulting in more persons being required to take the jab. Eventually, those who want to return to travel and those who want to do other things will find that it is not the government of Jamaica who will be imposing those things, but the countries that they wish to visit declare illness. Many of those countries are saying that you will have to present some proof of vaccination. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister noted that restrictions on some sectors of the economy, including entertainment, cannot last indefinitely and those restrictions will be lifted sometime in the future. But he cautioned that in the interim, the COVID-19 prevention measures will have to continue until a majority of the population is inoculated. Member of Parliament for ANOVA Western Tamika Davis is pleading for a bypass for the increasingly congested town of Lucy, as well as for the Ryla Bridge that sits at the edge of the town to be replaced. Davis, a first-term MP representing the governing Labour Party, GLP, has described the traffic situation in Lucy as grave. She noted that the situation is exuberated by an increase in in housing units coupled with an expansion of construction and commercial activities on the western side. These, as she said, have combined the increased traffic volumes in the town. As a consequence, the regular roads in Lucy are no longer able to filter the traffic through the town to Negro, and delays during peak and lunchtime hours are now an almost daily occurrence, said Davis as she made her first contribution to the state of the constituency debate in the House of Representatives. She said a partial solution included upgrade and rehabilitation of Malcolm Heights Drive and the dulciation of Willie Della Drive along the supporting traffic and pedestrian control measures. The measures outlined represent effective immediate short-term solutions. However, it is painfully obvious that a bypass is needed. The town of Lucy needs a bypass, Davis declared. Member of Parliament for Portland Eastern and Mary Vaz is looking forward to the development that is slated to come in stream at Bound Brooks, which he said has the potential to provide employment for up to 3,000 people. The 140,000 square feet development, which will be a collaboration between the Factories Corporation of Jamaica and the National Insurance Fund will include government offices and private businesses. Some 650,000 square feet will be reserved for business process outsourcing BPO operations. Groundbreaking is slated for January next year. Vaz was speaking Wednesday as she made her contribution to the state of the constituency debate in the House of Representatives, said the massive road work now underway on the South Coast Highway project has been temporary employment for some of the youths in the constituency, but she cited that with its heavy dependence on tourism, the constituency has been hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. Opportunities for our youths, traditional advancement have come to a practical standstill here in East Portland since we are part of the tourism belt. We have suffered due to the drastic and sudden decrease in visitor arrival, Vaz pointed out. Despite the setback, she said her constituency organization has pressed ahead by engaging the young people in government programs which provide training on the job, experience, and a stipend. As a part of effort to create employment, VAS has committed $500,000 from her constituency development fund towards the development of a vertical marine farm being implemented through the Alligator Ed Foundation. The project is being undertaken in collaboration with the United Kingdom government. This vertical farm will be a new source of income as it will be used to farm oysters, blue crab and Irish moss, Vaz shared.